Welcome to a guide to new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Okay, so these are mods for Monday, the 5th of August. Um, I was travelling back from the Lake District yesterday, didn't get a chance to do the videos yesterday, so that's why I'm putting it up today. I know I've missed a couple of other odd ones, but again, this is about the mods that came out Monday the 5th. Today is Tuesday the 6th that I'm actually posting the video, just to clear it up. We had three mods posted yesterday. I think it was actually four. Um, one of them did say an update, but I don't remember it coming out before. Uh, it was a three metre cedar. There was an update for Starowee's uh, map as well. Uh, but anyway, these are the three mods I'm going to be reviewing, rightly or wrongly. This is what I've got in front of me. So, I've got the Roof Green Hall. This is by Merck to Gernbauer, and it's um, a shelter, but this is a shelter kind of next level type thing. This is 11 slots to place, and I'll be honest with you, it's massive. I had a look in the store to place it. When I actually then went to place it, I couldn't get over how big it is. Now, the fact it says roof green hall, it's got like a grass roof. Very eco-friendly, kind of sloping roof to it. It's incredibly well made. The detail on it is amazing. I like all the, uh, the huge wooden roof supports. Like I say, the, the yeah, attention to detail on this one, really, really good got vents and all sorts of things all over it. Concrete base it's quite pricey, that's the one downside to it, but then when you look at the size of it, you've got to expect that. Let's have a look in store. So this is under sheds. If we scroll across and then we get two, there we go. This is Roof Green Hall. It's 150,000. Like I say, it's only 11 slots, which isn't too bad at all. Uh, so it's the lizard one. And when you look at the, say, placing it it's big it's a huge huge shelter anyway let's have a look inside as well shall we it's nice de nice details we've got external lights main door at either end seven by seven i think it says in the mod hub uh so let's just open that nice sound effect and it's cavernous i mean absolutely huge for storing your machinery and equipment this is your kind of buy this, never need another shed again type thing. But you're going to need a big space to place it, obviously. Huge, huge thing. Really, really cool. Now, over this side we have got lights. No, that's not lights. Lights were here. There's the lights. Get the lights on. Nice long rows of strip lights. Over here, I think the side door opens. Oh. No, it doesn't. Oh, that's obviously going into that side bit, isn't it? That's got the vents. Oh, we're not allowed in there. Okay. Now, this bit here is to open the windows, and when it says open, it's these top ones here. The bottom ones don't open, but all these top ones across there will all open. So I've got to try and get it at the right angle, so I'll get it to work, and you can kind of see them. There you go. That will open, give you a bit more ventilation along both sides. It's very cool. Then like I say, so you can have it as a drive-through shelter, which again, I like a drive-through shelter. When you've got long vehicles, especially when you've got the um, swivel axle trailers and those kind of things, articulated vehicles, those kind of things, it, it works really nicely. But this is a big, big mod, loads of detail. 150 grand is a little bit pricey, but you know, for what you get, I think it's well worth it. Nice mod. Nice mod by Mert to Gernbauer. There you go. So the roof green hall. Very cool indeed. Next mod I'm going to have a quick look at. We have got the Cramp Bandit 550. Um, this is by Lucas Dejo or Dejo and Danny86. Um, this is 15 slots. There's quite a few options available. And this is the kind of baby brother to a lot of the other cramp trailers we've got in game with some of the modded ones we've got already nice detailing on this one as well few options we can change colour and things like that we'll have a look at that in a second single axle so it is the smaller version of the ones that we kind of used to seeing um, we'll have a look in store this is under trailers um, what was I going to say yeah, we've got the cramp bandit 750 which is 51,000 um, and then we've got 
obviously the bigger ones, the KS950 for 62,000, and then we've got the much bigger, the SB230 1070. Keep going. Here we have it, the Bandit 550, 29,500. That's for the base model. At the bottom left-hand corner, it does say 22,500. That's the larger capacity. So on the bottom left, it gives you the maximum capacity, but the price it gives you is the cheapest price, which is a bit of a... It can be a little bit confusing to catch people out, just to, you know, to mention it. Anyway, so we can change the main colour to any of these. We can have the cramp red. We can have cramp black. Let's go around and zoom in a little bit. Uh, or we can have the cramp green. We can change the rim colour to the grey, to the green, kind of a light grey much lighter grey, uh, black, red, or well, it's not quite white, pretty close to white. Then design colour is the actually the, the bed inside. Um, at the moment it's showing green. If I change it to red you'll see there's a roll at the front here and that's kind of the belt inside that moves when you're unloading. So it does the belt on the bottom. If I change that again and put it on black you'll see it changes to black and the roll at the front changes to a black kind of roll for the belt. Uh, capacity, so this is what I'm talking about. 29,500 will get you the smallest capacity, 15,500. If I change that to the 22,500 you get extension boards and the price goes up to 32 grand, which is still isn't too bad really for a 22,500 trailer. There are trailers in the Mods Hub which are cheaper with larger capacity, so it's going to come down to you know whether you want something different, whether you like cramped trailers, you know, whatever it might be. So if we go back down um, and we'll go to tyre options. We've got trailer bulgs and we've got Michelins. There are two options on both. At the moment we're on standard. If I go to Michelins, standard. If we come back to trailer bulgs, we can go standard or wide. Go back up to Michelins, we've got standard or wide. So those are the options available. Uh, you can't have a multitude of colours, obviously that's just you know, the ones that are available there. But the trailer itself, very very neat, very very tidy. It's on the smaller category kind of trailers, but I like it. So it's a lot of detail on it. Nice mod. Nice mod. That's by Lucas, Dejo, and Danny86. So moving on to the last of the mods that came out on Monday. We have got this. This is the John Deere 959M Fella Buncher. This is by North Modding Company and Evgen Zaitev. Now I keep getting odd little um, spelling errors pop up, which is a bit weird, because I'm pretty sure when I did the last one by North Modding Company, it was Evgen Zaitsev, it said, and now this one says Zaitsev, so I apologise if I've got it wrong, um, it's what it says in the Mod Hub, I don't know if that's a spelling error on the first one, or on this one, no idea, but anyway. So we're kind of, from North Modding Company, we're kind of getting used to seeing this kind of design of vehicle, different arms, heads, you know, various different bits we get on the front. Now this is a fella buncher. A little while ago they bought out a fella buncher, just the head, so you could put on various different bits of equipment. Now this is massive. This is a huge fella buncher. Um, I've watched quite a few videos of these in real life to kind of see how they work, because I've had a bit of a play around with them and I'm, I'm terrible at using them. So I'll show you the mod, I'm not going to show you it being used, but there's one thing I want to say, and if the guys from North Modding Company want to comment and help me out with this, please do, um, because I'm, I'm really baffled how to use this thing. Anyway, so, nice bit of kit, tracked vehicle, four miles an hour this will run out. Now this has got uh, a lot of um, articulation, I suppose, is what you, what you want to say um so when you're going on slopes and hillsides and stuff like that you've got a lot of movement it keeps the cab level so you've got this kind of self-leveling system and it's goes it's quite severe you know quite steep slopes this will work on um we've got the arm itself and then the head like i say which is massive let's just jump in it start it up It's a nice tidy mod. Things do just get kind of get scaled up. It's just yeah, huge. We'll have a look in store. This comes under forestry machines. And as with a lot of stuff from North Modding Company, well, a lot of stuff in real life, it's not cheap. The 959M Fella Buncher is 500,000 to buy. Uh, it is how many slots is this? 23 slots if you're on console. 
Options available? None. You get what you get. 330 horsepower, runs at 4 miles an hour. If you want to lease it, it's 25,500, so it's not cheap to lease either. Um, now, as far as I understand it, a feller buncher is designed to fell trees. Now, it doesn't strip them like a tree harvester does, um, but the whole point about a feller buncher is it fells them and bunches, and it generally does it with smaller trees, but a head of this size is designed to do it with larger trees. So what you do is you go up, you cut the tree, you grab it with the arms at the front, go onto the next tree, cut that, grab it with the arms, and you bunch them up. Um, a bit like a skidder, and then you take it, lay them down, and then the next stage of the process begins. That's where I have a problem. Um, and it, it probably is just me, that's the point. Now, like I say, articulation, you know, it's difficult, I have got a steep slope here, but... It's not fast moving through the undergrowth. If you're going to take it anywhere, you really want to put it on a low loader because it just works better that way. Um, and the, the Goldhofer one it actually fits on there perfectly. You'll see as we go up the slope, the tracks are tilting slightly, but the actual cab stays level. That's obviously one of its features. And it will go side to side tilt as well. You've got a little bit of side tilt there, you can see. Not a huge amount on this slope, but it will be better on other slopes. Uh, inside, cab design, very neat and tidy, decals, all very neat and tidy, we've got the cab view, we've got side of the arm view, looking at the actual buncher itself, and then external, if I do on my controller, L1 and right stick side to side, we've got our turn side to side, if I do L1 and up and down on my right stick, I've got up and down that movement, if I now go R1, side to side I can rotate the head like so I can rotate the head left or right using my R1 and right stick and if I do R1 and up and down I get my in and out motion like so but if I go L1 and R1 I've then got that motion there so I can adjust the level of that and then if I go side to side no, if I go up and down I open up the arms like so so there's quite a few <laughs> Quite a few controls here to play with if you're on console, if you know if you're using a controller. So you can get the level you want pretty much in any position. Uh, open and close your arms. Now this is where I have a problem. And watching a few of these bunches on, like say online, if I turn it on now, turn on harvester, the blade spins. So what would happen is you come up to the tree, and as you cut the tree, you then close the arms like so around the tree, which grabs it. So you've cut the tree, you've grabbed it, and then you can move it around wherever you want to. Now the premise being, you then go up to the next tree, and all the ones I've looked at online, you've got two sets of arms. Now this one looks like it's got two sets of arms, but they're not independent. So what would normally happen, or what I've seen online anyway, is that the top set of arms, or the bottom set, whichever, will open, which means you can then cut the next tree and grab it while still holding on to the tree you've already got. Then once you've grabbed that one, the next set open and grab both. Because otherwise, if you cut a tree and you're holding it, for example... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you because I'm terrible at this. So you might as well just see what I mean. Right. Because there's so many controls, I'm going to get something wrong. I know I am. Anyway, uh, let's try and tilt that. So I get it right. Right. Tilt it again. Right. So. Now I can turn the harvester off if I want to and try and get to the tree that I'm stuck on. On the floor, there we go. I'll show you what I mean. So, if I go up to the tree now, the blade's going to be in the way. So, if I turn that on, it cuts the tree, and I need to grab it like so. So, I've grabbed the tree and I've pulled that in tight. So, I've got one tree on there. So, I have felled a tree. It's not technically bunched anything yet. It can't have bunched anything yet. No, no, no. Oh, it says, there we go. Because bunching it means you've got more than one. The problem I've got now is, as soon as I go to the next tree to cut it down and I open those arms, that tree falls out. So that's where I'm struggling a little bit. You've got to be incredibly quick if you're going to do it well. Um, whereas normally one set of arms would hold the tree, the second set would open, you cut the next tree and it kind of, you know, it works like that. I don't know if I'm making any sense here, but... This is the problem I've got now for it to be a buncher. I need to be able to bunch my stuff on. I'm stuck on my own tree stump, that's very helpful. Um, so if I now go to try and cut the next one, 
I've, I've either got to be incredibly quick with these arms, which I'll be honest with you, I'm not. But anyway, regardless, if you do manage to get more than one, or you only get one, you can then lift it up, uh, rotate the head if you want to put it sideways. I don't know why you would want to do it sideways, but you can if you want to. Um, I need to tilt it the right way. Close the arms, do that. Lift the arm up, do that. Out and down, and then once you've opened your arms up, like so, you can then put the trees down. So, you know, once, once you've bunched them, once you've learned how to do it, um, so there's a lot of range of motion, a lot of things to get your head around and to try and do. Like I say, um, if I'm doing something inherently wrong, please let me know, and that's what I'm... Because I've never been particularly good with the fella bunches. I'm better with the harvester, tree harvester that grabs them, strips them, and you're good to go. These, I would assume, are going to take a lot more practice, and you've got to be a lot quicker on the controls. But anyway, there you go. That's the John Deere 959 Fella Buncher by North Modding Company and Evgen Zaitev. Um, I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.